Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been a while, but I'm back with a little something for you today, which consists of an Asus Sabertooth 990FX motherboard with a Sapphire AMD R9 Fury, an Enermax 240mm AIO, and 8GB of Crucial Ballistics Tracer DDR3-1866 RAM that happens to be stuck on the annoying orange LEDs. Under the AIO, we have an AMD Phenom 2 960T quad-core CPU, which is now 10 years old, and we're going to overclock it and test it out in some games. As you can see from the Tech Power Up website, this CPU was released in 2010 for socket AM3 with a base clock of 3 GHz boosting to 3.4, 4 cores, 4 threads, 6 MB of L3 cache, all on a 45 nanometer process node. This is a Black Edition CPU, so the multiplier is unlocked, which is nice for overclocking. And although these are given the name Zosma, uh, technically it's a 2-band 6-core CPU with 2 cores disabled. So there's a chance we may be able to unlock it as well. So here you can see the overclock that's been applied. All cores running at just over 4.1 GHz with just under 1.6 volts V-core. We achieved this with a multiplier of 18 and a reference clock of 230, which brings our HT-Link and CPU Northbridge both to 2760 MHz. Our DDR3 is running at just over 1800 MHz, and temps look good even when the CPU is being stressed. So let's check out some Cinebench R15, and you can see a previous run with a score of 406. That was with uh, HW monitor running and all the game launchers still running in the background. So this score should be better with all of those closed out. And it is. This time we scored 424 points. So, yeah, I think we're all set to check out some games now. The R9 Fury should be able to handle everything for the most part, so we should get a good idea of the CPU performance here. First up is Doom from 2016. Using the Vulkan API and at 1080p with ultra settings and uh, 8x AF, our average FPS was 140 with 1% uh, at 84. And that's pretty good, but let's see if this is a trend. Next up is Resident Evil 3, the demo from 2020, and using DX12 at 1080p with a mix of high and medium settings, uh, no AA or motion blur, we get an average FPS of 141 with a pretty disappointing 1% low of 9, but that was all at the beginning. Um, we had some pretty hard stutters at the beginning of this benchmark run, and uh, that kind of sorted out and uh, just disappeared, and it was smooth after that, but that brought our 1% lows down to 9. Crisis Remastered also game from this year at 1080p with medium settings but high textures and water quality, AA and motion blur off, we averaged 57 FPS with a 1% of 18. I did also increase the shader quality and set ray tracing to performance and it still managed an average FPS in the 40s but it was pretty stuttery and uh, that may also be a limitation of the 4 gigabytes of VRAM. World War Z from 2019 using a Vulkan API, 1080p high settings with FXAA enabled. We averaged 76 FPS with 1% at 43. The game ran extremely well with the GPU being able to run at 100% for much of the time. And everyone always wants to see GTA 5 included, so at 1080p with settings at very high, AA and motion blur off, we managed 63 FPS with a 1% low of 40. That wasn't too bad, although the CPU is definitely holding back the GPU in this title. Fight through your disguise, so stay out of his line of sight. Hitman from 2016 at 1080p with high settings, medium shadows, 4x AF and no AA managed 62 FPS with 1% lows of 31. I should also point out that I'm not making any comparisons here to any other CPUs, I'm just showing what an overclocked quad-core Phenom 2 can do. Up next we have Rise of the Tomb Raider from 2015. Using DX12 at 1080p with high settings, 4x AF and AA in motion blur off, we get an average of 67 FPS with 1% lows of 33. I did also run a benchmark on this game with the CPU in the stock configuration. That ended up getting an average of 61 FPS and 1% low of 29, so it wasn't too far off.
Shadow of the Tomb Raider from 2018 using DX12 and high settings, 4X AF with no AA or motion blur. We had an average FPS of 57 with 1% low of 6. There's definitely some instances of noticeable stutter. Uh, I also tested this game with a stock CPU and it gave us 47 FPS average with 1% lows of 2 for comparison. Breakfast is up next, and this is one of my favorite games. And this is a DX11 game from 2014, but this game is updated all the time. At 1080p with medium settings and high details, AA and motion blur off, we averaged 71 FPS with 1% lows of 31. So uh, with the CPU, we had very good performance on Breakfast. Finally, last but not least, is Series Sam 4. This is a game that was just recently released, so recent in fact that it still plays like a beta. There are just way too many issues with Vulcan and DX12 in this game, so using DX11, which does seem to work well, we averaged 63 FPS at 1080p with high settings and 1% low of 14. So now that we have seen the performance of this 10 year old quad core CPU, um, let's see if we can unlock it into a 6 core. It's as simple as enabling an option in the BIOS and now you can see we have unlocked something. BIOS now says model unknown. So usually you need to add a tiny bit more vCore when you unlock one of these CPUs. So let's jump this up a tad and then we'll go into Windows and see if it worked. And there's a chance that it may have worked without upping the vCore because it seems the main board set it pretty high when you have it set to auto. Okay, so back in the Windows and CPU Z says we now have a 6 core CPU, a 1605T, so that's a plus. If you guys want to see that in a video, let me know. I can certainly test that out. So I guess I can give my conclusion here if there is one. As far as I'm concerned, the uh, Phenom 2s were great CPUs for the time without getting into power consumption and efficiency. I guess we can only surmise what a Phenom 3 would have looked like if they had refined this architecture further and added the newer instructions instead of replacing it with the FX series. But these days, there really is no point in buying one aside from the cool factor. With a list of games that does not support the CPU growing, uh, to use it for modern gaming is going to end up futile. With the prices of some of the AMD APUs and even the newer Athlon CPUs, unless you're building a retro rig from the Phenom era, uh, it really is pointless. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's a fun CPU from the past to play with. They tend to be great overclockers, they can handle quite a bit of voltage, and they take far less to cool than the FX series. Anyways, if you made it this far, thanks a bunch, and you guys stay safe, and I will see you on the next one.